out of the heart of our religion comes understanding, comes support for those who need support, uh, companionship for those who are lonely, uh, food for those who are hungry, drink for those who are thirsty. And that we do it because in doing that, we are loving God and we are serving God. Please welcome Lynn Maluli from the class of 1984, who is called to serve those in great need by delivering sustainable quality of life services to and with the people of South Sudan as the executive director for the nonprofit Water for South Sudan. So who used water today? Who had a drink? flushed a toilet, washed their hands, had coffee. Water is so readily available to us, but that's not the case in, throughout our world. So let me tell you about my journey from ND to helping deliver access to clean water. I arrived on campus in August of 1980, slightly clueless, having no idea what was ahead of me. Little did I know that my four years here would shape my entire life. Uh, my four years here were so rich and rewarding uh, the connections I made, meeting my husband, uh, making friends in Lewis Hall, and my deep friendship with the crowd that we were in London with, which was especially blessed in a special way by our beloved Jane Pitts, the head of our program. I also had the honor of studying in the General Program of Liberal Studies, Pete, brought to Notre Dame by Father Ted. I remember being in a final class before graduation, and Professor Philip Sloan gave us some parting words of wisdom. He said, do not think of yourselves as backing into life with this PLS degree, but know that you are prepared for whatever you're going to face. Little did I know how true those words were. So after college, I worked in communications for a few years, I got married, and then I spent 18 years at home raising and homeschooling our three children. As I contemplated the next chapter after that, I had no idea what to do. So I crafted an intention and a prayer that I would find meaningful work that was compatible with our family life. The answer to that prayer was a job offer at Water for South Sudan as their first US employee. I now serve as executive director at Water for South Sudan, a nonprofit based in Rochester, New York, with a full operations center in South Sudan where our local team provides access to clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. This program was started by a refugee Salva Dut, one of the original lost boys of Sudan, who came to this country with almost nothing and took all that he received into a program that changes lives back in his home country. Salva's story starts in 1974, where he was born in a remote village in southern Sudan, where his family herded cattle and his mother and sisters walked to collect water. At age 11, Salva was forced to flee because of the civil war that came to his village. He eventually met up with a group that were walking hundreds of miles to safety in Ethiopia. And then a number of years later, uh, they had to leave and he led a group of 1,500 boys walking through southern Sudan to Kenya, to another refugee camp. They faced unimaginable horrors along the way. They faced death by starvation, dehydration, attacks by animals, and conscription by soldiers. After 10 years in camps, Salva came to the US speaking little English, but determined to start his American life. He realized that his family had likely perished. Several years later, however, he found that his father was alive, but gravely ill from drinking contaminated water. So Salva resolved to drill a well for his father and start a nonprofit organization. So Water for South Sudan is now 20 years old. We've drilled more than 650 wells, rehabilitated over 400 wells, constructed water storage systems, and provide hygiene and sanitation in every community in which we work. Life in South Sudan is hard. And as Father Ted noted, for when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Truly, whenever you've did this for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did that for me. There's no shortage of people in need in our world, but let me take you to a particularly poor and fragile place, South Sudan, the newest country in the world. Five million people lack access to clean water and sanitation. Girls and women have to walk miles for water every day and fetching water that is often dirty and contaminated, leading to waterborne disease that is a huge risk for all, but especially deadly for children under age five, pregnant women, and the elderly. So our work brings 
improved life for everyone, improved health, education, and economic opportunities, and the beginnings of self-sufficiency for communities. So Salva started this organization thanks to his drive and vision, but it was able to grow and thrive thanks to the tens of thousands of supporters, their spirit of service and generosity, many of whom are school children who've been inspired by Salva's story, uh, students from around the world who've read his story in the book, A Long Walk to Water by Linda Sue Park. I first uh, experienced this spirit of generosity and service from my parents, but also then from the Notre Dame family, uh, inspired by Father Ted, like many, to work for peace and justice in our country and world. We are a diverse country and ND community. Most of us come from other places. America is a place of immigrants. I, myself, am the great-granddaughter of Irish and Hungarian immigrants. That's my story, and that's America's story. And what happens when you give immigrants and refugees a chance? For many of us, it led to being second-generation college students, like me, first or second generation. In the case of Salva Dut, it led to bringing life-giving access to clean water to over half a million people every single day. I had the distinct honor of meeting Father Ted at our 30th reunion, thanks to our 84 classmate, Dave Gauss. And I thanked Father Ted for two things that profoundly affected my life, admitting women to the university <laughs> and starting the General Program of Liberal Studies, PLS. <laughs> Father Ted uh, has planted seeds that have grown, blossomed, and scattered around the world. I was so blessed by my time at ND, brought me my education, friends, my husband, our children, and then I have had the distinct honor of working at, at Water for South Sudan, an um, organization that changes lives every day. So these gifts have def blossomed throughout my life. We are a very fortunate country, and even with our challenges, there is such abundance here that can be shared. We can make a difference for people who suffer. We can ease the sufferings of others. So I ask, how will you water the seeds of change and share water with those who thirst in your life?